So hello, I'm Alexandre Bourget, yeah, Director of Development at Savoir Faire Linux. Uh, this is going to be pretty quick, and so just get your brain straight and look at the screen. Okay, it's going to be a demo. I have a lot of stuff. I never timed it, so I'm just going to rush and look how <laughs> how long I have. Okay, I'm a bit tired, so I might do a lot of typos. So we'll start. See, I have that. I never did that before slide. Okay, well, I have a couple questions. I want to know who you are. I want tell me who has some PHP background. Raise your hand. Okay, who has some Python background? Does Python? Okay, okay. Who who heard about or read about pylons before? Oh, wow. So you, you use that? Who who used that? Okay. Uh, who worked with Django previously? Okay, so a bunch of Django, Django guys. Uh, who knows virtual env? Easy install. PIP, the replacement for Oh, <laughs> OK. And uh, who does web development with Java, or, or did? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, did. OK, OK, thanks. And everyone knows what a, an MVC framework is? OK, raise your hands, just I have a good, uh, OK, so I won't explain that. OK, good. I'm just going to quick start with uh, a little comparison between Django and Pylons. Just to set things up. I'm not going to bash on Django, just have a little difference. Uh. OK, so Django's the all star. See, it's one single thing. It has a norm to deal with databases. URL dispatcher it has its own forms management, which are pretty good, and request object authentication system and templating language. It, it does it pretty well. It even plays guitar, or, or almost. And <laughs> whoop, now I'm screwing the thing up. <laughs> And it has a lot of marketing and hypes. You know, so. And pylons is more like the Milky Way. Huh? You have <laughs> the best of the breed components from elsewhere. See, see pick up the best templating out there, engine out there, and it's wired into pylons. So pylons by itself is about 1,000 a thousand lines of codes. And <laughs> Maco. <laughs> now you choose your own. I, I'm going to have a little demo, demo here. So if you want a, a good ORM, go and get the best of the breed and plug it in, wire it in. And uh, so, poof, see, you have, like, for example, Mako, Jinja, and Genshi, and choose your authentication system. There's many out there, but you can wire them very easily. And uh, the strength of Python, we'll see, is because it's WSGA GI based, okay? W for web stand, uh, server gateway interface. We're going to see that in a moment. Okay, just so I didn't screw things up. Very good. OK, so overview of what we're going to see, we're going to see pylons. What's WSGI and what we can do about it? Controllers, templates, models. So MVC, MVC here, OK, this is the view. And we're going to see uh, a lot of demos and some st fun stuff we can do with, uh, with uh, pylons being a WSGI framework. Whew, man, that's a horrible just to follow. OK, now we're just going to set up the environment. We assume you have virtual env and pip. You're not going to do that with me. but. We have that already installed. You can install pip with easy install. It's a pretty nice thing. We're going to do that together. OK. Very good. Just show you pip a little bit here. If you pip help, you have a bunch of new functionalities, which are pretty cool, like bundle. You can have a bundle, which is many packages all bundled into one file. You can deploy that on a machine. Pretty cool. And freeze your feature, like the build out system. You can freeze all the requirements and all the versions in a file, and then you can install from that. You can have like a, S, a subversion and Git and uh, uh, repositories listed in there with specific version. So when you check out or install a new uh, environment with pip, well, you can or a new uh, installation, you can unfreeze those uh, version right into your environment. So you can follow. And notice here the uninstall, which was lacking into the easy install world, huh? No easy uninstall. So that's pretty cool too. <coughs> okay. Now we're going to create a virtual env environment, OK? Virtual env. We're going to specify we don't want no site packages. So we don't mind the Debian uh, distributed packages, OK? We want an isolated environment. And we're going to call that pylons env. It's going to be created here. And let's look into it. It's pretty quick. Just drops a couple of files. And see, you have a little sub, uh, sub uh, hier hierarchy here, which has sim links mostly. And simply to the standard library and a bunch of files like pip and python. And you're going to activate that with activates. Notice here the pylons env. Now you're in the environment. If you run python from there, well, and import os, for example, you're using the one in the environment. OK, so you can isolate all your packages right there. OK, so we're going to use that. <coughs> and poof, there you go. 
uh, I'm going to just show you what um, WSGI is. Now I should see that. There you go. <coughs> Thank you. Go away. Okay, so what's WSGI? WSGI is Java servlet. Okay, specification. It's a PEP333, so it's standard in Python. It's the way you deploy web application. It's the standard way to deploy web application. Some of you might have been there when I present that as a flash, but so it's a bit, I need to stuff it in so it's complete. But okay, so for example, you have Apache here, and, will that work? Apache, and with mod WSGI, which is loads the interpreter here. Oh, shoot, man. <laughs> That's bad. Okay, that had to happen. Okay, this way here. That work. Okay, so it's going to load the interpreter and then run your program, which contains WSGI. We're going to see what the WSGI application is. It's going to run that and loop until some client outside go and get something, goes through Apache, hits your program, knock knock, and it's going to call the application here. So it's, it's going to call the actual Python object, and it's going to populate a special environment which looks like CGI variables or what you get in under dollar underscore server uh, capital when in PHP. So uh, if you call, when you're going to call the application like that with two variables, it's a very simple uh, spec, and wait for the response and deal with it and send it back to the user. Oh yeah, they're very happy users. <laughs> okay, the application looks like oh, three modes. Of first application mode, you can you just have you just need that. It's a callable and it returns something that iterates. So an iterable that's going to be a generator, and at some point it has to call start response if it's going to re return something. It, well. It should do something. That was just a hello world. That's the environment variable. That's p passed on and uh, contains the request. On the server part, well, you have this, and you're going to create the environment, call the Python app, deal with the response. And now middleware, that's nice stuff, because uh, just like servlet can be stacked together and, uh, and uh, give functionalities, you can do that with uh, WSGI, for example. We're going to have an example. So this acts as a server to that application. This one acts as a server to this one while this one acts as a, uh, an application to the server. Very good. We don't, okay. So let's look here. I have a request coming from the web, and so we, I want to get something. It goes through error middleware, which is the stack here. That's a stack. It go, it's going to go through, come on, session middleware, and the session is going to fetch from the, from the drive based on cookies and add some session data to the environment variable. It's going to be passed on to my application, which is going to do something or crash. And if it crashes, well, it's going to go back to the session middleware with an error. That's my error, OK? And go to the error. And error middleware is made to handle errors. It's going to produce a nice, a beautiful page and send it back to the user unbroken. And you can even have further requests and go back and forth between the error middleware so you can debug interactively. We're going to see that. That's awesome. Well, that's in uh, the pylons framework. OK, that's the end here. Now, OK, we're going to install. I think I should go back manually. Okay, sorry for that. That's horrible. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to install pylons. Okay, only doing that here will install. It's going to download the packages from the web, of course. You know, whoop. I don't care. I have Squid 3 and I have all the packages installed. <laughs> Why did I do that? Pip install. Oh, yeah, sorry. OK. So it's going to install. So I'm just going to shoot the command once more. It's going to install down all the dependencies and all this stuff uh, and put that in my environment, in my local. Um, so it has installed all the dependencies with pip install. That allowed me to just download and not install right away. OK. <coughs> so now the next thing Pylons uses. So as I said, pylons is a thousand lines. It's really glue and just a way of, of thinking and bundling things together. So pylons does not do deployment per se. It uses paster, which is an awesome deployment uh, uh, Swiss knife. It's another Swiss knife, and so you have two. And so for example, paster is going to deal with creating a new application and scaffolding in the, ra in the Rails world, and it's going to serve the application. Paster has a production-ready uh, web server, and like Django, which you have to, you have to host somewhere else because the, the, the run server doesn't, is, isn't uh, solid enough to serve on. Uh, OK. And set up app to just uh, set up the database and create the uh, temporary directories, for example. 
Okay, so that's uh, what Pacer does. So we're going to look at create here. And create can list templates. And we see we have two templates, pylons and pylons minimal. So we can have two kind of projects. And you can build those. You can say, oh, I have all those files built. And it loads that plugin, loads that system. And I want to be able to start off with that uh, package next time. So you can do a paster template and load it like that. So I'm going to create, whoop, create. See, I select very well. At pylons, and we're going to oh, just get out of here. You don't have to be under the environment to deal with that. It's just activated. So pylons, we're going to call it MTL pi, OK? OK, now we're being asked, and I was there after, a templating language. See, we can use Mako, Genshi, or Jinja too. Let's have a look at those things. This should have been automatic. Where is that? Secondly, OK. So here's Mako, an example. It's more line-based, very powerful, very fast. It's you can insert. Uh, it's that's very Pythonic. It uses Python syntax. So those lines will be rendered as HTML. And you can render any type of files, CSV or wha what have you. OK? So sample Mako. And Jinja, too. This is more like a port of the Django templating system, which is, I think, more powerful. Uh, the guy who did that wanted to, to add some functionality. So a lot of Django people want to use that in Django because uh, it's better. So uh, use uh, that syntax, you can wrap it around. Pretty neat. And Genshi, which I find pretty cool too. See, you use those uh, uh, fake HTML tags, and it, it's going to deal with the line. It's not, you don't have to specify and for. It's just going to loop in the structure there. So it, it's not going to display if there's nothing in links. That's nice. OK. <laughs> Can't follow that. Select macro waiting. Nothing to do. OK, so we're going to select macro because it's nice, and I'm used to it, and I love it. And now SQL Alchemy here is an ORM, so Object Relational Mapper. It, it deals with database interfacing with Python. It's a very awesome uh, package, and uh, you would like to learn it right away because you can use that in pylons, but in all your other uh, database needs. You, you don't depend on pylons, unlike the Django ORM. Well, you're you're tied to Django. You can't use it externally or something like that. Or with a lot of. Uh, so I'm going to put true here. And in MTL, sorry, is that the next thing? In MTL, we'll have our pack. Or um, we're going to see that right after. I just want to start with a demo of SQL Alchemy, all right? It's, uh, in fact, uh, an extension called SQL Soup. That helps you introspect databases, already existing databases, and you can just, um, OK. And you can discover from the inside and use an object-oriented uh, interface to your data. data. So to do that, we're going to create a quickly a uh, from scratch a database. Oh, wait a second. We need to install. Sorry. SQL Alchemy. There we go. Download it from the web and install. All right. And we're going to create that database. So superdb.sqlite, create table users with ID, integer, primary key, auto increment, and a first name, varkar, something like that. You used to that, varkar255. Last name, varkar255. Oh, see, I knew there was something. You know the syntax for a auto increment? Oh, there's an underscore here. Oh, the best. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that probably be, OK, let's take it out. Because I, I didn't test it with the auto increment anyway. OK, so <coughs> insert into user. We're going to add some uh, values. So ID1, Alexandre Bourget, something like that. Huh? And then I'm going to change that for Antoine, which is my brother. Oh, yeah, I have to put that too. And then somebody else, I don't know. Bob, <laughs> Dylan. OK, there we go. So we could select from the database. You know SQL, uh, SQLite? It's a tiny database. It's a library from users. Here we go. And uh, there. OK, we have that file, superdb, SQLite. Wacky is my username. OK, now let's go with SQL soup. I have a Python here. We're going to import from SQL Alchemy 
from extend uh, SQL soup, import SQL soup, and we're going to create a connection to soup. We, uh, so uh, SQL Alchemy is also a database abstraction layer, so it deals with any database in the background, Oracle and uh, you name it. Okay. So here we just specify super dbsqlite. And S discovers automatically that there's a table users, and you can query them. And it's going to return objects where you can access uh, the elements inside. And SQL Alchemy has that neat Pythonic syntax to query it. So if you do, for example, users.id equals equals one, you don't have to specify id underscore underscore and all sorts of creepy stuff. It returns a binary expression because the Python allows you to do that. I don't know why some people didn't do that. And if you print it out or cast it to a string, it's going to be returned like that. And you can pass it as a parameter, users, see, whoa, what's that? Query, no, filter, sorry. Filter, and that gives you a query, a full query, and you can run it with all or put in a loop so it's an iterator, so you got the element here. Okay, that's. Pretty neat, isn't it? OK, thank you. <laughs> now, wow, we're running pretty fast, huh? aren't we? We'll have a lot of time for questions. Are you following? Yes. Is, it, is it OK, good pace? So now let's go and look at the files. No, is it all right? I can, I'll try to slow down. I have a little difficulty with that. So let's just look at the files in our project here. So you have an egg ready setup.py. You can pack. You can you can uh, uh, deploy it on PyPy. In French, is PP. Okay. <laughs> so and it's ready to go. You beat this to upload, and it's ready to go. You have those. Uh, so let's say the model here. I didn't explain the model, but here you have anything you want. Here was going to be SQL Alchemy stuff, but you can have anything you want uh, to go to data. Flat files, a CouchDB kit, for example, and grab your data from anywhere. It's a generic term model, so you store that in init. Now the controllers, you'll have your controller data here, the business logic stuff, so you can name it. You have several, several of them. And each controller is a WSGI application, okay? And we'll see that's cool. Now in templates, you'll have all your templates, which are basically what you want, Mako templates or Genshi templates, or flat files if you want. And in lib, well, it's just a convention here. So lib contains all your uh, things you're going to use for in every controller. Base, for example, contains things you're going to use in a controller's helpers you're going to use in the templates most of the time. So load stuff you're going to use with uh, h dot, uh, for example, trim or cut to words and put tr trailing dots, stuff like that. And app globals, this is where PHP gets blown off. You have an actual application running, and it keeps its state. You have a Python program running, and a request coming in, and App Globals is shared between all threads. All requests coming in shares App Global, and you can have some queues in there, so, so you can share data between those threads. For example, having a somewhere a, a Jabber connection, and it spits out data to the different threads, and you have the user connecting. So that's pretty cool. You can't do that with PHP unless you you spit that on a disk, uh, serialize, put that in memcached and stuff like that. So, okay, config. You'll have all the config configuration. Mostly those things are not going to change a lot. Routing, routing. Sorry, y you're going to route, for example, this URL to that controller. Slash foo goes to foo.py, and uh, you have a pretty uh, powerful engine. It's called routes, and it actually, it's an external project just tied in here because it's the best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, environment is just one function that's going to set up, like load the database, connect, and start up your, your things. Middleware we're going to see in a moment, and test stuff. Public is going to get served. And yes, with pylons, you can actually serve uh, your media files with pylons. You don't have to use some other means because it's not safe or stuff like that. I'm not looking at any place anywhere. <laughs> OK, so we have the database, and we're going to see that any file, which is just the configuration files, any files. Is that clear? Yeah. Sorry, I'm giving a lot of <coughs> course these times. So is that clear? You, have, you understood? Have questions? If you want to stop me at any time, you can just scream, okay? I, I'm speaking loud, so you just scream and say, what's that? Or, okay? Don't be shy. Now let's go and look the middleware. Uh, MTLPy config middleware. Not CD, come on. The middleware file is, I don't know if you noticed a little bit earlier, that my app. See, you have your WSGI stack here. That's the actual application, the one we're building. And it's stacked with the routes middleware, which does that URL directioning. 
And the session middleware where is going to load from disk the data according to the cookies and the cache middleware. If you don't want that anymore, you just stack it out. And of course, that's a little bit like other MVC frameworks. And you have that awesome error handler, which does, like I said, you can debug interactively. If you put that on production, of course, you're not going to put the error handler and that allow the people to uh, import OS and OS.system, but uh, it's very useful for debugging. Registry manager, and it, you can serve here if you want static URLs in public. And you just return that application. That's your WSGI application. The stack is built, and each application has been configured according to certain configs. Let's see here. You have the same screen? Oh yeah. Here. Configurations. OK. So that's good. Now let's go and create. Let's, we're going to run the server, OK? So you've seen Paster here. Paster, oh yeah. One cool thing of Paster, you can, you can have some plugins. So here, Pylons has some plugins. You can have the shell and controller. So it's pretty uh, easy to extend. And it's generic. You don't need to use Pylons. You can deploy other types of applications. In fact, any type of WSGI application. <coughs> OK, so we're going to create a controller. To do that, we're just going to create controller foo. It's going to create two files, a test file. I do tests with uh, external tools, but you can do that in, in there. I had to press a button. I don't think it's useful. Just a second, all right? Wait for button press. OK, after. OK, so I have that controller here created. And I'm going to call it paster serve. I'm going to pass it reload. Oh, let me just show you development.ini. So that's the configuration for our application. So you have a couple of defaults. You want to debug. That's going to be a, that's going to turn out as enabling or disabling the error handler. SMTP server, you'll receive, you'll receive by email if there's an error on your application uh, with full uh, uh, debugging info and, and logs and stuff. So the server here, listen on that port, use that as a loader. And we're going to listen on port 5000. Now for our application, well, full stack, yes or no, and static files. Here's a beaker, it's a caching middleware and a session middleware, which is pretty good. And uh, if you deploy a new system, it's going to create a random secret, so it can encrypt the, the elements you have config here. And most notably, SQL Alchemy here, URL, so you can choose your database. In fact, we're going to use that cute database I created earlier. Yes, I use Emacs. OK, so it's superdb.sqlite, huh? was it? And you have those loggers. OK, very good. Now we're ready to run the server, aren't we? And we notice a reload statement here. Uh, that means it's going to detect a files change, reload the server. But we have, that can be annoying sometimes when you have a big, uh, big problem. So we have a, a demo of something very sweet that can <coughs> allow, to you, allow you to blah, blah. OK. Now this is getting, oh, there it is. Very good. It works. So you have, uh, that's the welcome page. Those files, in fact, are just in public. We have a bunch of files in public. You just trash them away, away and you have your, uh, <coughs> your, uh, your environment set up. OK. Now we're going to go in our controller foo. And look what's there. So you have a bunch of imports, most notably. Oh, okay, those are comments. We don't care. I'm going to read them out if you want. So you have that controller based on base controller, that's a WSGI controller. So that thing, foo controller, at the end, it, there's, you have that identity of your foo controller, is an actual WSGI application. And it's going to be called as so, because Pylons is interleaved with WSGI. And it's going to route according to what uh, routes took out from the URL, for example, slash uh, index, or by default, this is the, the default uh, uh, method. It's going to call the right method here. So if we see, so the, the, the controller is named foo. Let's go in the routing section. So you have a pretty simple match. Uh, the controller name, if you have the controller name here, and here this is the action, well, it's going to be routed to the good controller and action. So these are two important keywords, controller and action, that actually point to the right uh, place. I shouldn't lose too much time here. OK, so let's go and see foo uh, index, for example. OK, here we have hello world, which is awesome. And if we modify, well, we'll notice here that's get, that gets reloaded, restarting, and it's going to be changed. Wow, so are you very happy now? <laughs> OK, now let's go to routing and add, for example, map connect. 
You can't read the green? I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not at this, at this time. Sorry? You have the Emacs command right away? Color. Okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use gedit. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. Is it better? Sorry? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it's going to be as fat, huh? Because the font of the terminal is fat, and it's going to be small, just like uh, Jean Sergeant. Wait, we couldn't read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, is that all right? So we're going to have here uh, blah, blah, goes to foo index, goes to browser. Okay, so we can, oh man, open. That's going to be slower though. Uh, config, routing. If we go here. So different HTTP versions? Verbs. Verbs, yeah, of course. Yeah, Rust deals with that. He's going to point to different things. You have a full REST controller. You just drop it in, it's going to point to different. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's supported. Yeah, so you see you can go to drop foo and index. So slash mp11 is going to point to that foo controller and uh, action index. It's going to get restarted. And if we go here, mp11 is going to point. Wow, that's brilliant. I probably made an error and it crashed the server. So there you go. See, mp11. OK, that's very not useful. I'm going to put, put that out for the next time. OK, now we're going to use a little bit of Mako, so of the templating engine. OK? OK? Yes. Thank you. So this, we're going to trash out that return here. And we have the comment that we can just put in. Return render. I'm used to Emacs. So foo index.mako. You can use HTML if you want. That's just the exception uh, we give. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go back. <laughs> I'm a, a bit speedier in here. This HTML, so you don't have the same coloring. Okay, so templates foo index dot make. I'm going to create that. Whoop. No, 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 I don't want that. I want to create that simple file. Can you read that? Uh, so uh, Montreal Python 11 title. So you have something like that. Head and <laughs> Body, what? <laughs> We're gonna have some some super title and some paragraph super stuff here. Okay. Now you can see the render thing. Well, it's gonna get rendered. Is that right? Server. Oh, great! So see that? <laughs> now it crashed. <laughs> I probably entered some weird things or broke. So you have that top level look. I don't know that extent, that, that error. But I can go and here, so that's the web error in, in, in action. And it crashed. And now I'm on a side thread, and the thread is continuing, and I can deal with the server, with the, 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 uh, the exception object still in memory. And I can go at any level, for sec first see the code here at this level or that at this point of the stack, and go and import pylons or from pylons import config and look what's inside config keys and we have all this see we can really introspect the request whoa from pylons import request request environment of course that's not pretty useful because you have already that in extra data okay and you can view the source code of each of the files right away here okay wow now let's fix that error so an MP11. <sighs> so what was the error? <laughs> <laughs> Render foo index mako. Uh, it doesn't even say because it's not a directory. And it's like can't locate. Oh, it just can't locate foo index. What's the file? Oh yeah, that's horrible. I didn't save the file. Make directory. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Yes. OK, so we have that file there. Perfect. So uh, let's add a bit of Mako stuff. For example, if we, were gone, we want to loop, man, that's horrible. If we want to loop through a list, OK, so import random. And we have a list here of random stuff. How would we do that? 
rand int 0 to 200, I don't know, for x in range 10. Okay. And we're going to store that in C. Notice that template context here, that pylon does that integration. The C there. So my list, oops, equals L. And in index, we'll be able to reuse those. Rand it non defined. Oh, yeah. So that's random. It's not better. OK. So let's go in the template now. And for example, UL LI. And here, for uh, L in my list. Uh, let me use that syntax. EL. There are numbers, huh? So we're all right with this. And that and four. Oops. Okay, so these are random numbers, okay? So that's the basic stuff. You know that, huh? We, we don't want to see that, so I wasted a lot of time doing that. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to strip that out a little bit. Okay, so now maybe something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we want to uh, have our application to actually serve video files. And we have on-demand uh, file server. You do that with uh, Apache serving the files, but you have to HD access file to secure or other means. We can do that all in pylons, because there's that awesome file app, WSGI application, which deals with, with uh, byte range and all the cranky stuff Apache does normally. Well, you have that WSGI application, which does what you can't see. Now this had to happen. I'm just going to pause. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get the right time. What's that? No, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. No, you didn't do anything. Again. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> OK. I want to go back to Emacs. OK, now if we want to do some video blah, Oh, yeah, that was this one here. Let's say controller showing it off. Controller foof. Sorry. Okay, let's create that. Uh, so uh, in foo, we have index. We're going to save that as video.mako. And we're going to put some video embedding stuff. So we're going to grab SWF object and stuff like that. OK. Script and uh, type text uh, JavaScript over here. SRC equals SWF object not JS. Don't worry. I, don't, I won't type SWF object. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we'll have that div ID video, which is going to be empty, and a little script here, which is going to embed. So the latest version of SWF object takes embed, SWF takes media player, VRL. OK, we're going to grab that from the web. Now we want that in a video tag. So it's going to be 6, 540, We have that Adobe version, some Express and Sauce stuff, and then the flash var. That's going to be in video file. That's, for example, elephant or MP4 I have here. OK, and that, poof. So that should be pretty good. Uh, video. So that's our video.mako file. Let's go in the controller, diff video self, and uh, return render foo video.mako. And we should, we should be able to see that at foo video. Of course, we don't have the files already. So we're going to go here and whew, there you go. Download <laughs> the, the media player and download the SWF object. Shoot, I should have put that in, in uh, MPL public. We want to serve that, OK? Public, so MPL public. And unzip the local directory here, media player. So we're all set. So we have that SWF object, blah, blah. Now what about the video file? We have nothing to play here. It does not exist. So we're going to create the controller to do that, the controller part to do that. OK, we're going to put that in a video file, for example, self. And we're going to 
get the file name from here. And we're going to use the awesome, is it from paste or file app, from an import file app and return file app temp. Don't do that at home, OK? <laughs> and this is a WSGI application, OK? And file app is going to be returned. And that's enough for pylons to just deal with it and call it. And anything that this does is going to be returned as the final request of the user. So to do that, it's, just, it's not just an application. Pylons can add the environment and start response if it sees you have that in there. And after you created the application, the configured application, well, you call it. Wow. So you can use any, like for example, track, or tr an instance of track, the, the, the bug ticket system. You do the same thing, you just instance of track, and you have it running there at that uh, mount point. And for the mount point part, let's look at config routing. We're going to add our little uh, map.connect.video file and file name. So anything that goes there is going to go to controller foo in action video file. Sorry for the PEP 8 compliance. OK. And so that's Too good. Many Sorry? Too many, Too many ends. Oh, in connect. Yeah, that's true. So normally, normally, if elephant.thing exists, wow, it's there. OK, I have Simlick in the background. So uh, if everything goes right, no, wait a second. Before we load that, no, let, let's load it. So I crashed at some point. Has not, oh, connect. There you go. And doing a play, it's going to load that. I don't know if you know the open source, totally open source movie uh, or uh, Elephant Dreams. OK, so you can play it out. Now what we want to do, of course, is not just serve a file. You can do that with Apache. But you could add some security here at that point. For example, if you have environment variable remote HTTP and you split it with the dots and you map that. Oh, you have the environment here. Sorry. Shut up. Okay, and you have the uh, you split it and you map with so int values and then you sum it up and let's say you only allow people which their IP sum is 128, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Else you just abort it with permission denied. So you can configure your application and use it according to your own uh, fanciness. This way, if you go here and call video file, I'm not going to try it with a now you're allowed because uh, I'm 127.001, but what about 129? OK, so that's an inc inconvenience of a uh, remote HTTP that doesn't exist. Oh, what's that? Remote HTTP. Remote host. What is it? Remote address. Sorry. So there you go. OK, so that's pretty much you know what, what's, what happening. OK, now let's go and integrate SQL Alchemy, OK, because it's fun. Let's go into model here. So you have some sample. We're going to uncomment that. You have three modes of operation in SQL Alchemy. You can use reflected table. We're going to see that. Reflected tables, which are going to discover the, the, the tables in the database and give you an object or just like SQL soup. But you can map it to a local object. And all the attributes in that uh, SQL suit we've seen, like dot first name and stuff, we haven't seen that, but uh, are going to map to that object. And you can add some functionalities, like uh, another method uh, to deal with, for example, users, change name, or I don't know, invalidate password. Or you could use a, a, a long definition like this. Okay, So you explicitly say, I want that table and that column and that stuff. You can create very complex reference, and it has all uh, uh, class uh, inheritance hierarchy stuff, and uh, it's very powerful. Uh, or you could use the declarative li layer, like you have in Django. You just say, I have that class. This attribute equals a column integer and stuff like that. And uh, they would uh, all three work. We're going to try the reflected table, because we have a beautiful database to use. OK, so let's say we have class user. And to use the reflected table, we have to use this one here. So users table, because we need, oh, here it is. 
users table equals none. It has to be a, sorry for that word, I'm take that out. Reflected user. So it's going to be reflected. And when we initialize the model, so in, in, in the environment, well, we're going to go and introspect autoload true. And you have to uncomment that here. And so here you're going to map the user object to the user's table. That's a bit too complicated, isn't it? That should be users, of course. And the table here will be users. So you want to go inside that way. This way, you could use a, a, an already existing database and create a new application over it. And you don't have to manage the schemes, uh, the schema, schema, that, that thing. You don't have to you let the other application in here, provided you don't modify it too, uh, too crankily. Well, you can use it with the, this application by introspection. OK, so if we want to test that, we can here use paster shell, which doesn't work because oh, let's just sim link the pylon environment. To my, I always do that here so I can activate poof, uh, paster shell, which loads the environment. So I have my model here and my user and model user query all is going to fetch in the database. Uh, no. OK, I forgot a line, but that should work. And we could create a new user. Uh, U, of course you could, from MTL pi model and port user, if you're a fan of a direct uh, access. So my user U, first name Super Bob, and uh, last name uh, Hero Bob, and my ID would be 7. And then we could add that to the session, just save it to that database. Okay, and you have the debugging info, see? So you can see the actual queries, which is kind of nice. OK, so I won't go uh, through all that CRUD stuff, OK? Because you probably don't care. I want to show you some neat stuff we can do with that. I'm going to skip that part. OK, uh, a quick overview of, do you guys want a three minutes break? No. OK, maybe I, I, I take one next time. <laughs> <laughs> Place. We're going to go to the controller here. Oh, do I have it open? OK. So my foo controller, we're going to show some, for example, a tom feed. Uh, so RSS. And this is going to show, I don't know, some uh, from. So uh, feed generator import a tom1 feed. Uh, we can create an atom feed here, which takes a title, super title, and a link to that site. We're going to URL 4, which is generated from routes. Uh, you can use routes uh, use with uh, URL both sides, generation of both sides, of course. And uh, link a description, super description. And uh, we need a language. And then to the feed, we're going to add an item, which was a title. Oh, uh, some posts I know I've seen. And uh, a link. Well, let's go to google.ca, which is an awesome site. <laughs> Description, a, a simple post. And we, we're going to set the content type to application atom XML and return. There we go. So we'd have a beautiful. Where did the response come from? Where did the response come from? It's loaded uh, automatically here. Oh. So it's a pylons. So that's what pylons uh, uh, gives you uh, on top of WSGI, which the Java specification gives right away. It gives a request and response. Here, WSGI is, is a, a bit more lightweight and gives uh, the application uh, the, the burden of uh, dealing with that. But uh, pylons uses WebOB, which is the best of the breed uh, response of, well, one of the best uh, response uh, objects, request and response. So let's go and see that in the website. No, we don't have a control. No, we're foo RSS. Of course, I'm probably did a bunch of typos. So I see the feed here. And just to be, OK, wait. That should launch. <laughs> What's that? Oh, there you go. 
No, so I'm going to add that to life free, which is a, a feed reader uh, to RSS, and you have it here with a new item and a new blah blah. Okay, so that's what web helpers is there for you. It has a bunch of HTML generation tools, so you can trim files, cut words, and add some uh, dot, 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 change dates, and uh, say, OK, uh, since two days, since one hour, since the last minute, and stuff like that. Also, HTML, it was ported by to, from Rails initially, but now it's been uh, expanded, and it's a bit, a bit uh, more complete and stuff. That's Web Helpers. It comes with pylons. But there again, you can use that with other projects. You're not tied to pylons, but OK. Okay, that's one. That one's a good one. Uh, now, what if you have a PHP application and you want to stack it up on your? You have an application here. You have foo RSS, and you deal with that slash the root of the server. And you want, for example, slash Bob or PHP app to host a PHP application. Well, we're going to create for that oops, a controller. And the controller only needs, so you have to copy paste from the, the WPHP website, uh, from WPHP import blah blah. And we're going to follow the convention here uh, by pylons to use PHP app controller. That's what it's going to seek. And I call a WPHP thing. We're going to host. Whoa, that's not that's a PHP app. And we're gonna serve here path templates first element and so we're gonna serve from our templates directory. Okay? And we can add PHP options, for example, magic quotes. Magic quote GPC off. And now you have the Power WSGI, this is a controller, and it's a WSGI application like any other, uh, the foo file. Oops. See, foo controller is a WSGI app, and the same as the PHP application. So you can go in your routes, go in uh, config routes, and add a special map or a simple map, if you will, PH PHP app, and here you add, what's the name? Path info. That's going to be passed on as the path info to the controller PHP app. Here you notice you don't need action because the controller does it all. Uh, you need an action only for pylons to, to know which function to execute. But here, PHP app does it all. Will that work? Maybe not because I think we didn't install. Huh? Pip install. Oh, yeah. Pip install. I have that in build somewhere. Huh? PHP. There you go. Okay. Now let's try that. Oh, before we can do that, we have to create the templates, don't we? So PHP app, let's go in there and do some PHP, man. So let's try index.php and sorry, it's been a long time. Uh, and try to serve that. Where did we try to serve that? PHP app and index.php. Is that going to work? No module name PHP app. Wait a second. In PHP app. From blah blah import PHP app. Where do you say that? There we go. Oh, I didn't save that file. Oh, that's horrible. Config not defined, of course. So from pylons import config. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have all those files hosted under that. And you have uh, that m WSGI rewrite thing. That understands the HT access mod rewrite thing, so you can have actually beautiful URLs from inside Python dealing with a PHP application underneath. So that's a little bit, <laughs> I don't know if you say uh, in France it's incestuous, it's a bit incestu incestuous, or anyway. <laughs> okay, so, but it works. I mean, you can have, and it spawns a PHP a CGI process in the background. I think that's Yen Viking did that, or, or Ben back that, I don't remember. And the paster tools, oh no, yeah, Python paste. Okay, okay, so that's good. Now, <coughs> oh man, what's the most important here? Okay, what do you, what do you want? I have, I have three things. So the reload problem, we can circumvent the reload problem using a WSGI. I'm going to do that. Okay. 
So see, if you have a big application, this has to be reloaded. If I go here and I modify, for example, this one, I add a PHP app, blah, and I save it, there's a moment, see, where that, oh, where that reloads and there's some dropped time. Huh? So, if you have that in production, if you want to update the code, well, you'll need to restart the service. So you have five, five seconds, depending on the, big, uh, the bigness of the application. Well, it's going to take five, ten seconds to reload, so you have that downtime. But you can use the awesome or simple or in config middleware, you know, config middleware, a simple thing called memento. And instead, so you could import memento. Of course, we're going to need to install that. Min, 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 two. <coughs> there you go. <coughs> it's a package on PyPy. And you replace that here with something that looks like assassin. And you give it the actual object you want, you'll want to load. See, this is, and we're going to give it the package we want to be dropped and reloaded at each new request. For example, my uh, mtlpy, and we, we won't need to load the pylons app anymore here, okay, because it's going to do it. And at, e at each new request, it's going to reload everything that's in mtlpy. That's mtlpy in green. Okay, let's try that because it's, it seems a bit mysterious. For example, foo index not implemented index and small i. So if I go and modify that foo file, okay, here I have a bunch of enters. I modify that for mako2. See, it's getting reloaded. That's annoying. So let, let's stop that and having placed our memento thing, prevent the reloading. And modify that again. See, it's not reloaded. Of course, it hasn't been loaded, but so F5 here, it's not reloaded. And if we change that for rand int 01, normally the code here changed. It should be reloaded in order to, uh, to be updated on a server. Well, it's, it got updated right away. And the, uh, the awesome part here is you can activate and deactivate the memento thing. So you can just activate it for a bunch of seconds while the code reloads, and you still all get your, your click stream and then you deactivate it on production servers, for example. So this is neat, and that's a WSGI application. It stacks in the middle and does a certain good job. In it. OK, was that fun? You probably don't have that, that problem often, huh? OK, uh, so that's good. In pylons, we have, wow. OK, I have an XML RPC server service or controller. Okay, you just change XMRPC. I can demo that. And I have also the beaker caching, caching algorithm with a new uh, 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 slick, uh, uh, clever CSS package. We can just demo like that. I have six minutes for question. You want a question or want me to demo that? Yeah, go ahead. What's Questions are better. What's the relation between pylons and turbogears? Okay, so pylons is the underlying uh, stack of turbogears. Turbogears adds some some, uh, it selects things for you. So you have that uh, ORM, you have that uh, type of thing to, to choose. So they chose things for you. And they add some more, uh, maybe uh, Yannick would be uh, better off to answer that. They add more um, eye candies, uh, selected application, and more functionalities on top of that. But once you learn pylons, well, you know Turbo Gears more uh, right away. So it's a bunch of libraries that they added on top of that. Yes, yes, here. Does the tie up the application instance? So the controller here is created on each request. It creates a new controller and calls it. So you just it create a new instance of the file app each time. And you can use conditional to run it or not. So you have one paster process, which listens for incoming uh, HTTP requests and spawns a thread for each request. 
And in that thread, well, you create a new instance of a foo controller. And in the code, you create a new, dynamically, of course, that's Python, you create a new instance of a file app each time. So the serving of file, are you sacrificing your CD and your game just to, as opposed to the static? Well, probably there's some, I wouldn't say there's absolutely no uh, overhead, of course, if you use Apache, which is optimized, but you can't. Uh, you use that when you can. Uh, you want to, to have some uh, checking or error permission checking or stuff like that. But you can do it because it has the power to do. It. Of course, it's gonna. It might take some um, uh, processing time on the machine that runs the other HTML page. May maybe you want it quicker. But um, so file app is pretty efficient. Yeah, but and it's fully fledged. It's the page that it crosses that is serving the file. Yep. Yep. I haven't talked about that, but the I'm gonna just show off. Uh, Where's that? Oh, that's on a bureau. Okay, the Apache demo. Oh, conf. Whoa, what's there? What's that? Oh. So that's an example uh, deployment script that you put that in Apache. That's one of the methods I prefer. Okay, because you can run the the process on your own username. You're not tied to www data, and your environment. Uh, for production is the same as development because you use paster for development and paster on production, and you use the uh, port um, mod proxy to just forward every request on a local port. So your process is listening on uh, 5004, and on the other side, well, you have that development.ini file that listens on local interface, and you can put a script in the ini uh, in it here. Okay, if you use that as an init.d script, it's going to load your application. Of course, just add that to your uh, file.ini, and you can use it with uh, that file start. And it loads the application as, as that user spawns as a daemon, and it's going to serve. That might not be very clear, but it, uh, it's pretty neat. So you just run your application just like you would with Apache. And then in the, the module, it's not separated. Uh, in fact, it's separated. It's a separate Python process. You can run different versions and stuff in different environments. Yes? Yep, yep, yep. It's used in production on several servers. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a good thing. See, it's because it's a project of its own, and it's worked on by itself, not as a, you know, a means to, OK, we need that because we have something else to do. Huh? Not looking at anyone or any project here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Any question? Yep, yeah, you had a question. Uh, one uh, thread uh, for a request? Yep. Okay. And uh, when we access uh, the session, it's uh, synchronized? Though, so the session, we haven't seen that. Beaker is a, uh, has the cache and the, uh, the session middleware we've seen. It stores that in a temporary directory. Okay? You can use memcached, you can do all sorts of uh, serializing uh, thing. But it doesn't store that in mem well, with memcached, yes. Well, you have several uh, ways to store the session data. Okay, by default, it's in a directory. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, f I'm a Quebecer French. I don't speak English very uh, fluently, so. Yes, back there. Yep. Well, you'd put a queue in there, so you could do threading. Uh, as you say, one uh, request. One, one thing cool you can do is, uh, for example, when you start the process, it's, that might not be an answer to your question, but. You can uh, spawn a process, you, you launch a uh, paster, and you start a thread on a side. And in that thread, you can wait and do some things like, for example, each hour. You don't need to uh, configure a, a cron job or stuff like that. In that case, you have one thread more than any request you're going to have. And in that special thread, you could also use that apps global and um, communicate through uh, each thread using that G. So You'd probably do something like imp uh, from pylons import uh, lib, sorry, I'm tired, import app globals as g. Before it was g, or you can just app, app globals, something like that. Now I'm not in an environment or not in a right, uh, right uh, directory. And you'd use that op global as a dictionary, or, as a, or I don't remember if it's a dictionary or just the attributes are mapped. And they're saved and shared between all the applications. Okay, and thread, thread safe yeah. manner. Uh, so. How about if we, if we have more than one uh, uh, queue? Do load balancing and you have more than one paper? Well, in that case, you probably, you're probably you going to need some other things okay. that I, I can't talk to you about, or I, I don't want to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's one of my 
Yeah, to do a load balancing. Use uh, Couch DB and use that as your uh, means to yeah. For well, I'm not going to suggest on your required infrastructure for your personal project, but I guess you have to find a solution if you want to spawn on several servers. Maybe yeah, have a central uh, data exchange stuff. Yeah, on, on one server having multiple cores, having one one process for each yeah. one being load balanced by the process. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah we could do that. Of course, you have a load balancer in front. You put that on AWS. Uh, Amazon uh, uh, EC2 and uh, have a load balancer hit different parts of the server. Yeah, and now that's application architecture. It doesn't have pretty yeah, uh, yeah, stuff to do with pylons, but yeah, yeah pylons would serve you that like any other sweet Python application. Are there any questions? Because I'm pretty much out of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't talk about that. So you have. To do that, you have uh, several um, shoot, man. You have several uh, packages that do that. You have Form Alchemy, for example, which does all the form rendering, and it's bound to SQL Alchemy. So you can th use that. Is is it Alchemy? Is it a good word? No. Sorry. Okay. So you can use that in Python or in other frameworks. But uh, Form Alchemy has a, an admin interface, so it's going to generate an admin interface. Maybe not as sweet as a Django one because it doesn't work, and they use that in production stuff. But uh, Form Academy does have something like that. Also, Tubor Gears have that cake sprox. Yeah, it's a bit ugly. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so uh, Tubor Gears is built on pylons. Huh? I had that question while you were out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what Tubor Gears? What does Tubor Gear add to pylons? Uh, it's not Turbo Gears. Turbo Gears yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another thing. Yeah, you can use that in pylons. And if it you can use it in pylons, and pylons does its fault. In fact, you cannot rely on the fact that it's there. Yeah, of course. You don't have as many uh, plugins and extensions for pylons that are going to be uh, pre-built. Like, uh, exactly. One example is uh, register functionality. On your website, you want to some user to give you his name, his email address. You want to send him an email, uh, an email to confirm his email address and give him a link where he can click to. That's something you can, you can just drop there inside Turbo Gears. Yeah. So with pylons, you have flexibility, and you can you, you mostly can. Ch if you have a, a, a problem, uh, if you have a, a project that use CouchDB, for example, well, you're probably better off using pylons and then adding the other stuff that was probably in Turbo Gears. But in Turbo Gears, in that matter, will be a little bit more like Django, which has Django apps. Uh, you notice here the WSGI applications are not like a commenting system with a bunch of tables. Uh, they're really application you So under that back, another slash, you have like a, a track instance, or you have a, a, a video on demand service, or you have uh, those type of uh, applications. All right. So Tuber gives allows you to uh, to do. Uh, that so you can have a look if you want into Turbo Gears, but learn that first, of course, because WSGI is Java's servlet. And who would deploy Java application today without a servlet? You know, you don't pipe and cr create your new me deployment methods. Okay. So we start with Pylon and go to Turbo Well, if that's what you need, of course. Yeah. yeah don't just don't just drop and oh, uh, there's a lot of hub on Django and go back, go there. And if it's not your need, well, you're gonna get struggling. In fact, a lot of people that start off because of the hype and they have to rewrite mostly everything at the end because uh, oh, it wasn't fit for that, it wasn't fit for that. It's not powerful enough for 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 what I need. Because today we don't only have applications that are like uh, my web blog and my address book and uh, simple database stuff. You you have an actual application that do some processing and do some. Uh, particular things and I don't know scan some stuff and be linked to other uh, internal systems so you have to think about that right, anyway okay anything else uh, yeah uh, when we want to deploy uh, the plugs on the server that are offering PHP like the yeah. Python it's uh, harder to find well uh, the Amazon EC2 is very cheap today load a server that's uh, it's, it's awesome you can do everything yeah, you yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> now you have uh, several uh, Python deployment options that are, you know, namely Google App Engine. Well, that's going to run on App Engine, okay? You, they have a couple of recipes, just copy paste and, and you know, spit it out on Google. Uh, of course, it's, 
it, it might not be very speedy when you have a row, but the web faction does a Python deployment point and click, I think. I never use that. It does. It does. Oh, a woman's voice. Okay. <laughs> Any other question? So I should have a last slide that says thank you and blah, blah. I don't have that. <laughs> and we've skipped a bunch of things. So thank you and I uh, hope you appreciate it. And I'm uh, ready for comments. If you want to spit on me or stuff like that, uh, I can talk. <laughs> and I won't be over there at the beer. So. A book. Thank you. It was a pleasure.